Okay guys, so now that we've gotten past the setup process, now we're on to the fun stuff. So you're going to want to hit new project and you're going to want to create a Win32 console application. So this one here, uh, double clicked on it, shouldn't have done that. So you want to enter a name. So very basic first tutorial sort of project is always Hello World. Um, and so then you'll get this sort of application wizard thing pop up. You're going to want to go to application settings and set empty project. And then after you've done that, you just hit finish. Um, the empty project thing is just because otherwise it's going to give you a bunch of stuff that you don't really need. Um, and then to the source files filter, these filters don't really mean stuff. You could just add this direct, you could add files directly to it. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, we'll add to the source files filter. God, uh, okay, new item though. So we click new item. We're going to want to make a C++ file dot CPP. So I'm going to enter a name like uh, main uh, and then hit add. So now we have this main.cpp file. With this main.cpp file, uh, we're going to want to include a couple things. So we're going to want to include... Um, so what does include mean? So when you say include, um, basically you're at... Oh, auto-complete it for me there. Um, control space will show you all the different uh, default includes that it can find. Um, so uh, io stream... And we're going to want to include um, probably oh shoot this one here. So include pretty much just takes a bunch of uh, other files that exist in uh, on basically the Windows or wherever. Like it basically, how how best to explain this? It's it's basically like including more code to your file. So IO stream and stdio8.h are um, files that sort of exist in your on your computer that you can include to your project. So you get access to more um, more more abilities. I guess is the best way to say it um, in layman terms. We'll, I'll later explain it in more detail as we go. Um, but for basics, we're gonna make void main bracket void bracket squiggly bracket squiggly bracket so very important has to look exactly like this so main is where your program will always start this is where all your code will begin this is just like the basically the very start point of your of your program so it'll start reading here and then we're going to want to go print f and then in quotations uh, we will put in hello world this is my first program and you're gonna want to end that with a uh, forward slash n so forward slash is right above the enter in between the enter key and the backslash actually right on the very side here and and make sure you don't confuse that with the uh, forward slash which is uh, this one here which is right next to shift that's one of the most common problems uh, you'll run into when you're first starting okay so then you put another bracket on the end of this print and a semicolon semicolons represent the ends of lines very important don't forget them it'll probably be one of your most common mistakes when you first start coding is this missing semicolon so once we have this we can then run this by hitting F5 or hitting this little green button up here called start debugging so we're gonna hit that um, this project is out of date blah 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 yes build it and that didn't really show up the reason for that is there's no stop but if you hit control F5 Right guys, so, sorry, a bit of a cut there. Um, so, control F5 opposed to F5. So, when you hit F5 or this little green key, what you're doing is you're debugging the program. And as soon as the, the basically what this does is it prints this and then goes to the next line. There's no more cut lines of code. It terminates the process. 
um, if you hit control F5 you're running without the debugger and it'll add this little nice press any key to continue um, I'll get into exactly what the debugger is later for now just understand that it's a way of better understanding your code and I'll kind of I guess I can show it slightly here so let's see I can't okay so let's say we have print um, you know what I'm just gonna use control X control V control V and um, we will change this message to uh, second message okay so I do want to touch on this backslash n so what is this backslash n um, this backslash n is the new line character so basically what that does is when it sees that new line it'll print to the next line so we'll show that actually so if you see here we have hello world this is my first project new line second message so if we remove this though you'll see that it will not move to the second line and it'll just all appear on one line so that's just like your almost your enter key sort of for uh, printing stuff so now if we put if we hit uh, okay so I had to disable all the keys because F9 apparently stops the recording um, so I need these keys for programming but so uh, if you hit F9 you'll see this little red dot show up here you can also click on this gray area to add breakpoints in as well but wherever your cursor is that's where it's gonna put that breakpoint on the side so what is a breakpoint so if you debug and hit F5 it'll go and you'll see this yellow arrow this yellow arrow represents the spot in or the line in which your code is being run so if you hit F10 you'll move forward and then you can kind of F10 out of the project it goes into some weird stuff which is actually like what's happening in the background behind um, your very simple program but yeah so you can kind of F10 through this and then if I was able to bring up the window Oh, I can. Okay, here we go. So you can see it's just printed "Hello World." This is my first project. If we come back in here and hit F10 over the uh, print F, we get this second message comes up. So you can walk through your code line by line and understand exactly what it's doing. Um, so that'll become very useful, and I'll go into more detail of more advanced debugging methods. But for now, that's basically what the debugger is. But if you hit Control F5 you're not going to get any of those breakpoints because it's running it without the debugger um, but you get this nice little stop message whereas um, if you don't have any breakpoints in there if you hit F5 it just runs the program and then closes um, okay so that's that's a lot of the basics of your first program which is hello world but let's get into let's try and get into some types of variables some um, type definitions so in programming we have a couple different um, types of variables and a variable is sort of like a it, it can be anything it's variable that's sort of its definition it, and but what it can be is defined by its type so you can have a bunch of different things um, we got int bools chars uh, should probably put floats um, oh and doubles doubles aren't used that often but I should explain them so ints are you can have an integer and so this is how you define a variable an integer uh, is its type its name can be anything as long as it doesn't start with a number um, and there's a couple other rules oh I can't remember any of them because I never name my variables near weird stuff um, basic rule of thumb you're probably gonna want to uh, just name your variables um, descriptively um, I can't shoot it's bugging me now that I can't remember the other things you can't do with naming oh and you can't name it already existing things so you can't have integer int or, or int int because int 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 is a predefined uh, variable name or a variable type so you can't have that or uh, include or any other like blue letter stuff you can't use that as your uh, as your variable name but we can give something like uh, integer and that's probably integer spelled wrong um, but we can call this something like a uh, whole number so what an integer is integers only work um, and basically the whole number range there is no decimals for her uh, integers so if I was to say 
um, this is basically the way the code works is integer then the name then you can do equals and then give it a number and that would be what the int is equal um, or you can do uh, it separately so you can do whole number uh, equals six and that also will set it to six um, but the thing is if you try and do like a decimal on an integer it will it will truncate it so let let's just show that now um, so let me just do something here uh, let's mm. okay so every time I want to do something I have to get further into this so this here is the comment section um, so what is a comment so if I do that two for uh, f two uh, backslashes yeah the ones next to shift um, if you do two of those it becomes green green code isn't run so if we were to put in a print here um, like printf bracket quotes hello bracket uh, semicolon and new line character so if we put in a breakpoint here and we run this um, and then walk over this you'll see that it doesn't execute that line of code so it basically allows you to put in text comments are normally used for um, explanations in your code you kinda wanna comment your code so that other people who come along and read it can understand it so you may want to comment something like uh, uh, printing hello world to the console um, so that would be a comment um, so anyways I just gonna comment this uh, this stuff I've written down out so that the program won't run it 